The film of the two 440s, known as Cali Bogies, commenced where the last film finished. The second of the two engines was 54486, which had had a more recent coat of paint than her sister, as she bore the post-1957 British Railways totem on her tender. This totem was the subject of some acrimony between British Railways and the College of Heraldry. Apparently, only a left-facing lion had been submitted to and approved by the College. British Railways produced both left and right-hand versions to ensure the lion always faced forward. As only a left-facing one had been granted, the right-hand one was illegal, and thereafter the lion on the right of the engine looked back from whence he had come. The 440s made a number of extra movements for the camera. The use of these engines had been specially arranged for this program, once again demonstrating the excellent working arrangements that the railway roundabout team enjoyed with British Railways by this time. The locomotives were members of a class of 48 machines which had been produced under the superintendency of William Pickersgill between 1916 and 1922. They were effectively the Caledonian Railway's final express passenger design and were the descendants of a famous line of classic Scottish 440s which had commenced during the reign of Dougal Drummond from 1882 to 1890. Drummond, who was responsible for the T9s, which we saw at the beginning of this program, introduced the inside cylindered 440 layout on both the North British and Caledonian railways. His successors on the latter, notably Lambie and McIntosh, developed the design gradually over a period of years. Progressive enlargements became known as the Dunalisteres, the engines all being named. McIntosh's final version was the Dunalister 4 series, and these were updated during Pickersgill's regime, becoming the basis of the design of the new engines, which were unofficially dubbed Dunalister 5s. These were very successful engines, and the class survived intact until 1953, when number 54481 was scrapped after an accident, the remainder disappearing between 1959 and 1962. The locomotives reversed down onto a train in Perth station. This was not, however, the train which was to be filmed. That was the overnight mails and sleeper which ran nightly from Euston to Inverness, arriving at Perth in the early hours, which would have made filming impracticable. Therefore, a dummy run was arranged for the previous day, and this is what we see here, with the locomotives making a number of false starts for the cameras. Pat Whitehouse came up to Scotland the following day. Both Pat and John had full-time jobs, with Railway Roundabout taking up a lot of their spare time. The official trip was first filmed at Blair Athol as the light became sufficient. This station stood at the foot of the long climb through the Grampian Mountains, which was always known to the Highland men as the Hill. Blair Athol shed housed a number of locomotives for banking use. A radio program was also produced under the title of Railway Roundup, the sound recorders for this was Eric Russell, who was seen climbing aboard the second engine with his cumbersome equipment. With John Adams at the line side, Pat riding on the pilot engine, and Eric on the train engine, the show was on the road.
Note the vintage mail coach behind the standard BR Gov or general utility van. John Adams was able to get ahead of the train in a number of different places as he was driven by a legendary Scottish cameraman, Bill W.J.V. Anderson, who knew the line intimately. The 16-mile climb from Blair to the summit at Dromochta included 7 miles at 1 in 70. The train then ran downhill to Aviemore, where the final views were filmed. The train ran on to Inverness via Sloch Summit on the new direct route, and the engines were to return to Perth later in the day with a train on the old Highland route via Darva, which joined the new route at Aviemore. <laughs> 